Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's Convergence Research Performance. My name is Stephen Mercutio, I'm the Director and Chief Curator of the Black Art Museum. I'm also the Artistic Director of the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Center for the Arts. I'm joined by my Co-Director and Managing Director, Melissa Noble, who will say a little bit more about the Mitchell Center. But I just want to kind of kick off the evening and say a little bit about Convergence Research as well as the Manir al Kadiri exhibition. Um, so Convergence Research is a program that the Blacker and the Mitchell Center co-present. Um, we also want to give a huge thanks to Don Raven, our guest curator for this year. Um, it's a program that, that really celebrates interdisciplinary collaboration and performance and partnership. And really the dialogue that dis different disciplines can have between one another. And so we, we present all manner of performance here. We typically do one per month um, during the academic year. And it can be in any stage of development or becoming. We always sort of look for different partners. We want the Blacker to be a place where this kind of laboratory and experimental collaboration can happen on a regular basis. Uh, we're also thrilled to be working with Rob Smith and, and his class once again. He's one of our return collaborators. And the opportunity to have a dialogue between one of the exhibitions that we present here at the Blacker and to hear young composers and the way that they are seeing the work through their music. Um, so, I know many of you are familiar with the Manir al Kadiri exhibition, um, but if you have not yet seen it, please do. It is up until January 8th. We're always free of charge here. Manir is a Kuwaiti artist. The exhibition is called Refined Vision. In a lot of ways, it's, it's what she calls a self portrait. It's her wrestling with a number of her memories as a child in Kuwait when the Gulf War was raging and in the aftermath of the Gulf War when oil rigs and wells were being set on fire, the sky was black, you were wiping oil off of your skin, and she's coming to terms with all of these sort of formative memories as a child and kind of confronting what is real, what is imagined, what becomes science fiction, and what becomes deeply ingrained in one's psyche. Um, so please come and see the exhibition. Four new works were commissioned through the Mitchell Center. She's also a Mitchell Center artist in residence. Um, and we've also just recently produced some video interviews with her as well. So all that material will be available on our websites. Um, but tonight you're going to be hearing young composers' responses to Manir al Kadiri. So I'm going to now hand it off to Melissa to just say just a little bit more about the Mitchell Center. Yeah, so uh, I'm the managing director, as Stephen mentioned, and I oversee the production and the curation of this particular program um, and the graduate student, Donald Raven, this year. But we have a graduate student every year that comes from the Arts Leadership Program, and they are tasked with this production of Convergence Research for the entire year. Um, the Mitchell Center functions as a place and for all sorts of convergence to happen on, in our college specifically. Our units consist of the School of Music, the School of Theater and Dance, the School of Art, um, Blacker Art Museum, and the Creative Writing Program. And so our mission really on campus is to do exactly this, this kind of program to support students and faculty to have this kind of interaction and, and have a way to um, connect to other disciplines. So that is really our function, as well as our visiting artist program, which Mr. Manira is part of. We um, provide scholarships and fellowships, a scholar in residence program for postdocs, um, performances, exhibitions. We support a lot of different programs on campus and off. And so now I'm going to introduce Rob, who's going to talk more about, and all of the students will get to talk more about the piece. So thank you so much, Rob. Very brief. I'm Rob Smith, and I'm the head of the composition area. You're going to hear seven works by our composition majors who have responded to some of the artwork that is here. It is going to be played by Poppy Bennett, who is a professional clarinetist from London, who has been visiting us for the last couple of weeks. She's been giving lectures and giving recitals, and it's been a terrific experience to be working with her. So I'll introduce her and our first composer. Here, Poppy. First composer Gideon Weaver will get up and say a few words about his piece, and then I believe Poppy will play just a couple notes to make sure instruments ready to go. Gideon. Hi, I'm Gideon. Uh, my piece for clarinet is called Bright with Roses. I was inspired by the art piece uh, 
talking to the spot, it's the VHS footage in the corner. I thought the art piece was really, really cool, really emotional, so I was touched by it, so I really tried to reflect that in the Karen's piece. So, I hope you enjoy. So I hope you can hear those ideas of spinning in that magic kind of way. Please enjoy my piece. <laughs> Thank you. 
the screen win, and I wrote the next piece you're going to hear, Looking Glass. It is based off of that purple dinosaur in the center of the room singing karaoke. Um, when I wrote this piece, I actually didn't have uh, the artwork to look at, so I based it off of the title itself, Seismic Song. And I was mostly concerned with the way sound travels. So if you imagine an initial sound and the ripples it creates, how those circles get wider and wider, I played with that uh, through the use of slowing down and speeding up. Whatever happens going up is the same uh, going down. There's a lot of mirroring itself. So I hope you can hear that in this piece, Looking Glass. <laughs> based on an artwork originally titled Visions of a Toxic Wasteland. It's now a short film called True Guy, but uh, I only have the original title wrong. A gentle breeze drifting through dilapidated structures in a sort of post-human wasteland uh, to reflect the title Visions of a Toxic Wasteland. So I hope you see that and enjoy.
music is inspired by the shadow of cats. So Pitch starts low, gets your
And uh, what really drew me into that piece was uh, just the rawness of the footage. It's, it's you know, bleak. It's apocalyptic. If you will just be invented in no time. And it really brought this sense of, you know, anguish and hopelessness. And I really tried to capture that reaction with the message of uh, hope no drugs. In about two minutes, we'll just have a short talk back with the composer. So, if you're interested in talking to them anymore and have any questions, stick around. Maybe, Thanks maybe for coming. Order the composers should come and come and talk. Yes. That's, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> some research. 
really quick, which is normally a combination of practice and research and um, effort. Um, and uh, it was it was cool. It gave me kind of put some background into how the approach was. Right. Um, for me, I well, I had the luxury of a video being the piece that I got to uh, use, and so um, seeing it in person, uh, the video piece wasn't any different. But um, I guess in context of everything else, and after hearing everything that the docent had to say about the background behind all the other pieces, it kind of gave more context. And it was interesting to go back to my piece after I'd already written it and kind of view it differently in that context. And hearing it play here is um, just even more layers on top of that. But it was really fun to have like pretty much the entire piece in front of me and then get to see it in a completely different, grainier view. But sure if they were coming or not, and I thought we should still go ahead and try to represent all the works, and I gave them all the titles, because I thought that's actually kind of an interesting thing to do, is to see what the composers might do with a certain title, and then what the artist did with the title, and it may be very, very different. As in Seismic Song, I think Lee's piece is probably a bit more serious than the dinosaur singing, but <laughs> although the dinosaur singing. Yeah. 
I love using the mathematical formula uh, as my way to start the composition. So when I heard that I was working with uh, seismic song, that idea of sound and how the waves ripple out, I started on a single note on the piano C, and I played around like, oh, what if I increase the interval? And then I took all of the notes that came from that and then lined it up, and that was what um, that part where it's like ba -da 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 -da, all of that came from C gradually increasing the interval out. It was like the whole thing was over four octaves, but then I condensed it down for certain moments like that. And I love doing that because it gives it, um, I like keep seeing that the math checked out in the end. And so for me, a lot of those patterns is what build the majority of my work. Um, well, for me, I knew um, I was working with this atmosphere of like disorder and chaos. And um, I knew I wanted to, at least from mixed line, I just, I knew I wanted something that was a mixed meter, so I really, I really wasn't looking for any brass bonds to really listen in, in terms of a pulse. Um, but when I went from there, I just um, kind of picked some um, rhythmic motors that I wanted to use to kind of help um, express that sense of disorder. And I just went from there and um, kind of played by ear and then adjusted when it wasn't working. And um, I just kind of rinse and repeat with that process and just experiment with what I already had and I played with it later. Um, I think for me, a lot of the time I have generally some idea that I check somewhere that like this is the, the idea that came from right here. Um, that being said, like a lot of the times I like starting with the root for a piece and then working from that. Uh, which is kind of like, I appreciate the, the project from the outset, it was just the names, and then from there, I went to the music to it, see how I liked all of it, and then from there, I started working with the group. Um, and, or, or just say what spoke to me, I love it, so. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think with this piece, really, it was just, from the outset, I had a kind of clear vision of what I wanted to work with the group. Um, but with other pieces, it's, it's any piece can be a character play to me, but I had to kind of like listen in. I wanted to do this technique, So for a, a couple of us, it's our second time uh, doing something, but the uh, first time was, not to be on this name, but it was electronic works that were then uh, premiered over at Rice in their uh, studio.
I continue to step there is huge amounts of pressure when you play songs that are hidden in that room. But there's huge amounts of pressure if you have those Britney pieces in the room. Because <laughs> all of the mistakes that usually nobody notice, they're like, oh, I can remember that you've done that. And um, so that's like quite intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, I think that being said, it's very exciting um, because it is a huge privilege to be the first person to play a piece of music. Like, and this week I've premiered eight pieces, nine pieces of music, and this week ten. And that is, <sighs> I'm quite tired. <laughs> and that, that, you know, like, I am so lucky to have had that opportunity because, like, I was the first person to play it. That's something historic. That's really exciting. Um, I think one of the things that I did certainly with this was that I, so I got sent the work in sort of like stages, um, and I kind of, and actually because Rob sent me the link to the exhibition, and I deliberately didn't look initially because one of the things that I think is really important. Is that if the composer is writing into a particular layer, the layer also has an input on the first interpretation. Um, so I wanted to learn the pieces without understanding, without having met any of the composers, without understanding any of the external stimuli, and then build that up once I'd learned them already. Because I think otherwise, otherwise you might as well just have a computer game, you know? Um, and one of the joyous things about new works is that it is collaborative. So what I did was I learnt them all in the UK, and then when I arrived, I came here on the first day of the year, and then I met the And I think that was quite a good way of doing it, because then it's sort of like, you add a little bit extra in, you add a new constraint each kind of time you look at it, and that means that you get the freedom at the beginning, and then you sort of converge on things. Converge is very good to And please take this from someone who has very little musical knowledge. But hearing how you all arrived um, at your compositions from very different starting points, when you heard all together, or when you performed it all together, were you surprised by any similarities, um, like in through line throughout all the music that made it feel as if it was all a conversation in the same way that this art is kind of all a conversation with each other? Yeah, I think, I mean, so one of the things um, that I really, well, so I, I gave a lecture last week on why the the planet, and one of the things that I uh, quite often had to wonder was, was that I think one of the great things, particularly when you're writing solo works, or, and particularly this instrument, is that the rhapsodic feel of um, when you're writing monophonic music is something that you should always explore, because you don't have the constraint of having to get an ensemble together. Um, also then, that is the same thing, it gives the artist a bit of freedom with it as well, so you're collaborating with each other. Um, I think, I can tell that all the composers have been taught in similar ways, just from a like technical point of view, there's lots of things that are quite similar, like uh, idiom, idiomatic, it's not a real reason for idiomatic, it's just, but like there are a couple of bits where I'm like, okay, yeah, I see that this works in here. Um, and also, you know, there is there was a, a lot of the sense of this kind of like pre um, austere, groundbreaking, apocalyptic feeling throughout all of them. None of them are particularly cheerful uh, pieces of music. Um, so I think even without having seen this in any art, I was aware that there was kind of a less positive mood coming through. Um, yeah, mostly they were very. 